Coming up, I'm gonna be talking about a major change in Disney's distribution of physical media. Also talking about how Disney are being sued for their upcoming sports streaming service and much more. But before we go any further, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. Hi, it's Roger here from what's on at DisneyPlus.com. It's time for a quick Disney Plus news roundup. Let's start off talking about physical media. Because with the kind of the success of streaming services like Disney Plus and Netflix, physical media sales have just continued to drop year on year. This year they're expecting that in North America it's going to be down to about a billion dollars worth of physical media. That's across all the studios compared to like 20 plus billion years ago. It is massively down and so we're seeing some big changes. Yesterday I reported on how Disney's closing down its Disney Movie Club. Well there was even more news just after that because now Sony Entertainment is going to be taking over the distribution of Disney's physical media. So that includes DVD, Blu-ray, and also 4K. It doesn't include digital releases, so that doesn't affect them going on to like Amazon or Vudu, and also doesn't affect anything happening onto Disney Plus or anything like that. It is just the physical market. The simple thing is they are outsourcing it to Sony because Sony can do it much cheaper than Disney can, um, because obviously they're still making lots of discs for lots of different companies. That's kind of the main industry that they're kind of still looking at. And so there, so Disney are looking to save some money. It's part of their cost cutting measures. Might obviously as well re reduce um, some staffing as well. I suspect there's gonna be some job cuts. Yeah, so Sony is gonna be taking over the distribution and the creation of these discs. Now it's unclear kind of how this is gonna work. This is gonna be for new releases and also catalog. I suspect Disney will be going to Sony Here's our, you know, this is our stuff that we want you to do. You know, they might even still be creating, like designing it all, and then they just pass it to Sony to do it all. Same thing with the catalog stuff. I mean, it sees some people kind of getting really excited about the fact that Sony is just going to get access to the entire Disney vault and everything's going to get re-released. Sony just isn't going to be able to just go in there and just like take a, anything they want off the shelf and turn it into it. There's going to have to be, so Disney going to have to sign off on it. It's, it's just the fact that Sony are going to be the ones doing it. They're doing this with other companies. We're seeing a lot of consolidation across the home market. Because simply put, there's just not enough discs being made anymore to make it worthwhile everyone doing their own little thing. So we're seeing the consolidation, it will bring the costs down for Disney. And the good thing is, I think, for this is that it means now that physical media should continue to be released, at least in North America, for a while yet. Um, internationally in some countries, like Australia stuff, they've just flat out just stop uh, making them there and selling them there because they just don't make enough money. There is a big shift. I know a lot of people are going to be in the comments talking about how physical media is coming back and it's a revival. The simple truth, it, it cannot revive to the point of where it used to be. There's going to be a little bit of an upswing. I think there's a lot of people that are interested in physical media that don't like things being removed from streaming services and platforms and like to own stuff. But convenience is king and that is what a lot of people are going with. And I haven't brought like a DVD or a Blu-ray in years and I'm sure there's a lot of you that do the same. But I know there are a lot of people that still enjoy buying physical media. Um, I still think of it as now becoming like a niche market and I think Disney or now really need to get Sony to kind of go in on this idea of making these items more appealing to collectors. You know, it's a bit like with how the vinyl market has kind of rejuvenated the music industry for physical media, but obviously most music is still consumed on streaming. But I, I'm hoping that now with Sony doing this, it does at least mean that we're going to be seeing some more releases in the future for people that want to buy these items. But how this is going to affect now, like release schedules and who's going to deal with the marketing and all this, because up till now Disney's kind of done it all itself. Are we going to start seeing a bit more of a separation in terms of dates? Because usually when they put out an announcement, you know, they'll be like, it's out on digital, it's coming out on Blu-ray, etc. They they rarely kind of mention Disney Plus at the same time because they, they usually want to try and get those extra sales in. Whether or not now, it's just that they focus on digital and comes out later. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how this comes about. It's probably going to take um, a few releases until we get a schedule and stuff. But yeah, so and up till now as well, kind of the Blu-ray DVD releases have kind of been a good indication of when movies would arrive on Disney Plus because that's how most people now watch stuff. But big change. Yeah, it's again, just big shifts moving around this industry. But it does at least mean now that at least in North America, discs are still going to be coming for a good while yet. But depends on how much more it, it drops. Because I'm I'm sure there's still going to be a market, but how much that's going to be. Because even just trying to find a disc now, most of the, like, the supermarkets and big stores no longer sell them. A lot of it is online only. 
and a few like specialist stores and stuff. But I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Are you going to continue to buy the physical releases? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments below. Disney's also announced everything that's going to be coming to Disney Plus in March. I'm going to be honest, there wasn't really a lot on this list that we didn't already know about. You know, we're going to be getting new episodes of Bad Batch every week. We'll be getting new episodes of X-Men 97 dropping from the 20th of March. That's now been confirmed as a weekly release which um, we weren't entirely too sure. We'll be getting the new Taylor Swift special on the 15th of March, plus we're getting Renegade Nell at the end of March. It has also been confirmed that we're going to be getting Morbius next Friday on the 1st of March. So if you have been wanting to watch that film, it's coming. Um, on for, it's only for the US because uh, Disney did sign a multi-year deal with Sony a few years ago that gave them the pay two rights for their films from 2022 to 2026. So it's leaving Netflix in the US and then it's heading over to Disney Plus for its pay to window. Um, so yeah, so you, it's just, I mean, it's morbid time. I mean, it's gonna be great fun to do it. Um, no other major new releases, I think, at the minute. Whether or not we get Wish, that might be something that they hold off for a little bit later on, but yeah, at the minute, you can check the full link um, below to get all the details, but not a huge amount there really to kind of jump up and down about at the moment. But let us know if you're excited for Morbius and maybe like Taylor Swift and X-Men. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments below. We also got some major news which could have some major issues for Disney and the streaming and entertainment business as a whole. Because earlier this month, Disney announced that it was teaming up with Fox and also Warner Brothers Discovery to launch a brand new sports streaming service which is set to launch later this year and it's going to be able to be bundled in with Disney Plus and Max and Hulu and it's kind of going to offer all the linear channels plus um, extra sports content from like ESPN um, all in one bundle kind of estimated to be maybe around about 40 50 bucks and it's kind of like for people that maybe don't have cable or have never had cable but only really want to watch like linear channels like that for sports well, um, as you might imagine, not everyone was happy about that. The Department of Justice is going to be looking into it, but more importantly, Fubo TV has just announced that they are actually going to be suing the three companies for um, damages, but also over a whole host of other stuff as well, because they've been saying they've been wanting to do this for years and they kept getting turned away, and they either want the project kind of canned or they want damages and stuff because they feel like they've been overpaying. This has major implications because first off, if this goes into court and stuff, then therefore we could end up seeing, you know, the project delayed or completely cancelled. Um, if they were to win, obviously it's more money than get being paid out to Fubo. It's kind of a weird one. I kind of look at it as well as this kind of weird thing of like Fubo's just selling everybody else's products and then they want to get it the same price as the people that are selling it. You do kind of look at that and go, and they're saying like it's antitrust and all the rest of it. I'm like, well, it is their channel, it's their content and you want to sell it, I don't know. It's a little bit weird, a bit bold, but nevertheless, this could have major implications because if Fubo gets this through, then other streaming platforms like maybe like YouTube TV could maybe offer the same thing. We're really seeing now, and they're all scratching around trying to work out how to kind of continue on with cable. We're seeing lots of bundles and stuff in some different ways. Um, whether or not this entire platform was just done just to bump up some stock uh, for Fox, Disney and Warner Brothers, whether or not they actually are intending, whether they can get it through, I think it's going to depend on you know how willing they are. Do they? Uh, I mean, putting it through for a lawsuit is pretty big. They were, maybe were expecting this, but we're, I mean, Fubo TV, their stocks dropped when this uh, platform was announced because people just aren't going to need FUBU um, and I think that's kind of going to be the, the issue here I mean maybe the, I mean it's only like two dollars a stock when I look yesterday so maybe the alternative is we'll just buy FUBU and then that kind of fixes the problem but yeah so this this is definitely going to have implications I think either way it goes it's going to set um, where this whole industry is moving to and we're really seeing now of the studios are trying to cut out the middlemen and the middlemen are now fighting going excuse me can we uh, we don't want to be we don't want to have our stuff shut down but we're seeing this is why all the cable companies and stuff are closing down is they just can't really do this um fubo is saying it's gonna be worse for uh, consumers but i don't know i mean if it can go either way either way you look at it, it it's there's only real people that are going to win here are the lawyers. So they're the ones that are going to make the money from it. But obviously Fubo know that if this thing goes through, their business is really at risk. They want to offer the same platforms. But it would make sense that, you know, Fox and Disney and Warner Brothers could offer a service with their own products cheaper than selling it for a third party that they're going to take a cut. 
I don't know, but it's all very complicated, but nevertheless, it's another lawsuit for Disney to deal with, but obviously it's not just them, they've, they've also got Warner Brothers and Fox in there with them, so yeah, it's going to be an issue, but whether or not this thing makes the, the full release, I don't know, um, I've been sceptical whether or not they were able to do that, Disney is still planning on launching their ESPN platform next year, um, that's a very different platform because it's just their stuff, but yeah, let us know. I, what do you think? Who do you think is going to win? What do you think is going to happen there? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. In our question of the day, which comes from Broken Bridge, he says, Hi Roger, what would you like to see the most from Disney Plus during this year? What's the one thing you wish they would do better and what would you wish they would stop doing? This one's pretty cool. So let's now talk about, let's do the, the fun bit first off. Like what do you uh, hope they want to do? I really want them to kind of get to grips with being... Disney Plus is the core streaming service. Sort out what they're doing with this Hulu stuff. Get Hulu and Disney Plus in there. Merge it in one price, one go. Sort that out and become a global streaming service to be able to compete with Netflix without all of these distractions of different platforms and different channels. Because I feel like this is the thing is they've still got their feet and fingers and like different pies all over the place and they can't really commit. Um, I think Linear still has um, a place, and I still think that needs to be part of it. But I think now we need to. There needs to be flipped the other way of, you know, you have like a new show, like like last night. You know, we had like Will Trent and Good Doctor debut on ABC. Well, you can have it debuted as well on Disney Plus at the same time as it goes out on Linear, or even later in the day it goes out on Linear. I think we're at that point now where they need to they need to go to that next step, um, but they're obviously worried about linear. Maybe things will change as contracts move around. But that's the thing I'd like them to do is just get things on par. And also global. You know, if we've got new episodes of like Will Trent and stuff, we had a new episode drop in the US yesterday, that should be released globally. That should be out there for everyone to watch and they really use because it just feels like they they don't use these shows enough to kind of build up the, the audience outside of it. And so I think that's an issue I'd like. And for them to stop doing, it's kind of the same thing, really. Uh, I'd like them to stop treating international audiences like as sort of subpar to the US audiences. Um, you know, you're still getting the same money from us. You're still getting the same things. Um, I mean, especially like, you know, like for those of us, you know, that, you know, it's, it's the same language. I, you know, like why, why is it not, you know, here, out here in the UK and out in Australia and out in Canada and Singapore and South Africa, etc. And obviously adding in um, additional dubbing and, and subtitles and stuff, you know, takes extra time. But then you should hold back that episode and that whole series until you are ready to launch it at the same time. Not just rushing it out because you want to get it out on ABC and that's all that matters. Just as my little little rant on that one. But nevertheless, let me know. Do you agree with me? Do you not? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments below. If you've got a good question, if it's really good, I will pick it out for tomorrow's video. And on that note, guys, thank you very much. See you guys soon. Laters.